Many people are asking questions about personal protective equipment to protect yourself and your family against the coronavirus, with the biggest concern by far being appropriate masks, specifically which masks are best at protecting the respiratory system since that is the most common and popular route for coronavirus spread. I'm sure you all know coronavirus now, a highly contagious lung infection that can spread without showing symptoms. Masking yourself is the first important step in ensuring you are not exposed to unnecessary amounts of the virus. It has so far infected 7,800 people and left 170 dead, the majority of them being in Asia. There is many people who are fond of using surgical masks to protect themselves from the coronavirus, but the truth is that these masks are not effective in stopping the virus. They simply lack the extensive face protection along with the mask containing pores too big for the virus to be caught in. And although they are better than nothing, they are not ideal whatsoever in permanently blocking out the virus. The reason for this being that the paper surgical masks are protected for exhaling of your breath and are not suited to the inhalation of small airborne particles and the protection against such. They can be used as some low level of protection from water droplets in the air, but this is limited and short-lived before you have to throw the mask out. It is generally not advised to depend on a surgical mask, since the size of the coronavirus has been estimated to be 0.1 microns, while the common flu is 0.8 to 1.2 microns. However, they are better than nothing, a scarf will stop some of the water droplets as well. An ideal mask should be able to filter out 0.1 and 0.2 microns, with the human hair being, for example, 100 microns. However, surgical masks do not filter such below 0.3 microns, making it a risky choice against the coronavirus. Also, regular surgical masks do not protect the eyes, which is a second route for coronavirus infection. Regardless of mask, it is highly advised to use a physical barrier, like a face shield, to protect against your face. This can range from a full scuba diver mask to a simple plastic face shield that tradesmen use to protect against the breeze. A physical barrier is huge in stopping the coronavirus, better than any other mask on the market, since it will stop the virus landing on your face, eyes, mouth, and nose simply by blocking the cloud of virus particles headed in your direction. No matter the grade, the mask one wears will only work if it is a good fit. This is also why surgical masks are unadvised, because the fit factor, coefficient that states how well the mask fits your face, can determine if your mask will filter particles at all, or if they will just leak through the seal where it meets the cheeks and sinuses of your face. You can pinch an ill-fitting mask with your fingers to close the gaps, but this is only if there are no other options left. For men, importantly, keeping clean-shaven is very important. As many soldiers in World War I learned when the beards broke the seal of their gas masks, and it didn't end too well for them. Now on to the masks that do work, somewhat. The masks that do work, somewhat, are ones that are in the P-N95 grade and above. Before we get started, what does P95 mean? P95 or P100 or P99 certification means for masks. For example, the 95 on a P95 mask means the mask, if properly fitted, can filter out particles down to 0.3 microns 95% of the time. So this includes everything from dust to debris, to small vapors and gases, and even some bacteria and viruses. So these masks, or any mask, are never a guarantee you will get rid of 100% of the virus floating around in the air. While P95 masks can block cough droplets and aerosols better than surgical ones, they are less ideal at blocking out the virus particles themselves, but remain in the middle ground where they are able to filter the larger particles coronavirus travels on, but not the coronavirus itself once it lands on the actual filters of the mask. In addition, the effectiveness of these lower grade P-N95 masks is highly dependent on the surrounding atmosphere and concentration of the virus. All pathogens need an infection threshold to affect their host. If you're in a room with a low concentration of corona particles and use a combination of a P95 and a face shield, there's a solid chance you may not contract the disease. Since the majority of the virus will be blocked by a face shield, 
and then have infected water droplets filter out. But this will only work in areas with low crowding and infrequent coughing, so it's not good to wear on crowded morning commute trains or busy restaurants. Here, the coronavirus may become so common that it ends up swarming around your face shield and your middle grade mask not ending well for the user, and not proving much of a use after all. Now we move on to what's the ideal mask or the respirator. These masks usually range from the P or N100 mask, an upgrade from the P95, to the powered air purifying respirator, PAPR, to an entire self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCUBA, the best thought of as a SCUBA mask and an oxygen tank. Sadly, only one of these is that affordable for most budgets and that is the P or N100 mask which will filter out 0.3 microns 99.97% of the time and it will stop the overwhelming majority of particles, vapors, dust that the virus is attached to, including the virus itself. This mask largely lacks eye protection, although there are many other available which come with full protection. Unlike the P95 that filters out 0.3 microns 95% of the time, the P100 filters out 0.3 microns and 99.97% of the time, and can filter out the majority of particles at 0.2 microns around the upper size of the coronavirus. Face protection is always recommended and or a physical barrier between those who are infected and those who are not is always the ideal. This is why scuba masks and powered air respirators are always the best options but expensive ones at that. For a cheaper alternative, try a full face mask with P100 filters. And for the cheapest alternative, simply avoid those who are coughing or seem ill altogether. A full suit is also recommended, but more details on that will be in the next video describing protecting the rest of your body from the coronavirus. It is also strongly advised you simply tell your family of the coronavirus and its prevention methods. Education is the best preventative medicine, and educating your friends and family on the coronavirus and the information in this video is key. In addition to consistently sanitize your phones, countertops, hands, face, and body on a regular basis, don't be afraid to maybe push back those plans to go out to the club, or push back those plans to attend a crowded stadium in order to avoid crowded areas where the virus loves to spread. And please remember that you must always decontaminate your mask when you are entering your own house or when you are finished the use of it. This can be done through a UV blast or leaving in the sun for three days. Or if you continue to use and reuse the mask without decontamination such as this, the viruses on the mask may affect you if you touch the mask with your bare hands and eventually touch your bare hands with your face without having decontaminated the mask in the first place. Always remember to put your mask at least 20 to 30 minutes underneath a UV lamp or scan a UV light over the mask slowly and in layers for up 20 to 30 minutes in order to ensure that there is enough UV energy to genocide and destroy the viruses and bacteria. And finally, as we all know, Please do not hoard masks. I understand coronavirus can seem like something that's scary, but the current outbreak is not something that you should be hoarding your masks for. Beyond using masks or buying them for your family and friends, hoarding masks denies others those who may need the protection the means to obtain it, thereby increasing your chances of getting sick too simply because those people were unable to protect themselves in the first place. Being selfish in these times is the last thing anyone needs. For this organization, chaos and distrust from such acts is exactly what the virus needs to spread around and go completely unnoticed. Stay tuned for more videos on surviving the corona epidemic 